I would now like to introduce Professor Mark Morgan to talk to you um, about the research that he's been doing since he retired on ageing and in particular on positive ageing. Thank you very much uh, indeed, Trudy. Now, I did some work for a few years on the study that Trudy mentioned growing up in Ireland, and that study of nine-year-olds. And what emerged in that was that younger uh, children benefit greatly from having generations in their families, particularly they benefit greatly from their grandparents and the interaction with their grandparents. So when I began to work on the next phase, having to do with the age-friendly university, the other the thought that occurred to me was, do their grandparents benefit? How does it help? Does the generational effect work both ways? So for that reason, I began to look at the factors and the influences on maintaining cognitive brain power, whatever you like to call it, in later years with aging. What kind of, what, do, what does that show? We all know that the environment, encouragement, uh, stimulation, challenges, that that makes a great deal of difference to children. What about older people? I was astounded to find that that applies almost to a greater extent in the case of aging. And you'll see why. Um, first of all, if we look at the picture, it's well known that some aspects of um, intellectual functioning decline with age. And particularly, it's, but what is not known and emphasized is how, is how slight that is, but also that it is in specific areas. If I were to give you this and say to you, um, three, six, seven, four, eight, three, two, one, nine. Now repeat that after me. You'd say, well, that's actually an item from a cognitive test, would you believe? And you'd say, who cares about that? If, I, if there's a telephone number, I'll write it down, and you'd be dead right. But that's the kind of information, new information, that older people remember less well, but younger people do. Now, for that reason, um, recent events, older people don't remember what happened yesterday as well as they do uh, a long time ago, but they remember acquired knowledge. And for that reason, if you look at, not IQ tests, but if you look at success at work, what you find is that there are largely positive, uh, a positive association with aging. In other words, that as people get older, they work better, not in, into their 70s. That's the evidence. Except interestingly, in the case of air traffic controllers. Now I thought air traffic controllers, uh, that all they ever did was go on strike. But, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's not fair. Um, but the air traffic controllers have to be able to remember a number of things at the same time, where planes are, that, that, that. For that reason, there's a compulsory retirement age of, in some cases, as low as 59. And it makes sense. But very few of us use the skills that air traffic controllers need. Um, finally, I just mentioned there about why is it that if you, if you look at some signs, the, the word they use in Ireland here a lot is the tsunami of older generation. We're going to have so many people age 97. Somebody calculated that the people in the EU uh, over 85 would be the same population as Spain. And what they're saying is, look at the scale of dementia among those. Now, that's an exaggeration. There are two things about dementia, and this is all I'd say about it. One of them is that over, for any given age group, for any given age group, say if you take age 87, the percentage of people with dementia at that age has declined. Ah, you'd say, well, why, why so? But then the number of people who live to be 87 has increased massively. The result is you have more people with dementia, but the actual incidence of it is actually declining. Um, okay, the other bit of good news that I want to mention to you uh, before we get on to what children, how children can help us with various things is that comparison over the generation. If you look, we now have tests for about 120 years and the most interesting thing about that is that what has happened is that tests have improved. 
Now you might say, well, that's a cultural thing or whatever. What's really interesting is that that also applies to older people. So that in the Berlin aging study, which was, I think, about 20 odd years apart, the two phases, uh, somebody who's aged now 79 has the same intellectual functioning as somebody who was 63 in the earlier study. That's a huge change. Uh, in other words, what I'm saying to you, it's not only the case that life expectancy has improved, but so has that aspect that intellectual and social functioning has also improved. Now, um, why do older adults do so well? I'll, I'll go, uh, for, for, well, there are a number of reasons. Um, one is, has to do with brain reserve. There's a great thing that it's not only how you're functioning today that matters in your old age, but rather what you acquired. There are, uh, there's a famous nuns study that people have seen that apparently people, nuns, who uh, have all the signs and physiological signs of having dementia are functioning perfectly. There's a great deal, what's called cognitive reserve. In other words, that if you acquire particular skills, that that stands to you. And, there's, and that does in various ways. The most interesting one, I think, comes from Canada, where people who, as uh, where uh, older people, if they had acquired two languages, English and French, are less susceptible to cognitive, to brain decline than people who only know one language. Of great interest to us in Ireland here, where we have two languages we're supposed to have anyway. Um, the other thing um, that that, uh, that that makes a difference, and speak to some of these, is that motivation is a crucial thing. And adults, mature adults, tend to be highly motivated, tend to be interested, and they tend to persevere longer with various tasks. And because of that, they it makes a huge difference and it helps to maintain their uh, intellectual functioning. Now I'll be very specific. Why is it that, what are the specific things that adults can do? The one that jumps ahead of everyone else, literally jumps, is physical activity. <laughs> About any study, and I've, I've read, I saw one uh, uh, meta-analysis of 18 studies, that, that, that in preventing decline a cognitive or intellectual decline, physical exercise is one of the, is the most important factor. It works in various ways. So this is why, why it's relevant, of course, is chasing around your grandchildren, trying to keep up with them, trying to make certain they don't cross the road before you, to all those things, the more active you are, the better. Uh, but there are lots of other things. Their, their physical activity makes a difference for uh, depression. You're less likely to be depressed. It makes a difference on your on your health generally, on your sense of efficacy. There is, of course, it's not simple. People are scared of falling, and fear of, of falling is one of those big things. But there is a way of, of, of compromising on that so that people have a sense of efficacy, that they can manage physical activities, and yet uh, not put themselves in danger. The other thing that makes a huge difference, one of the things about aging is that there's a holistic dimension. In other words, do you know when you read a psychology book and it tells you that's chapter one on intellectual development, so emotional development, some other development. What it doesn't emphasize enough is the interaction, how they impact on each other. Now that's exactly what applies in the case of aging. That social interaction is a huge factor, doing things that people enjoy, that even in some experimental studies, that even a modest increase in social activity makes a, a, a huge difference. The other thing, and I just mentioned uh, here briefly, is social interact is intellectual interaction. People think that if the principle, if you don't uh, use it, you lose it. That is true, but it isn't. It is not a good idea simply to decide I'm going to learn a new language just for the sake of that. It's what matters is that there's an, a level of challenge. And that could mean continuing with something you're working on already. If it challenges what is important in intellectual activities for older people, is that it challenge their intellectual, uh, their, their higher order thinking, that it's not simply passively to, uh, taking in things. And also, of course, there is the benefit of uh, earlier learning. I just mentioned there, there's an active uh, um, pro project 
The other thing that I'm going to mention, and I'm aware that I should stop in a minute or two, uh, is, is this one that I put at the bottom there. The, the Irish study of aging is called TILDA. And in the Journal of Psychology and Aging, a few months back, 2016, they have a paper that I think is probably one of the most interesting ones that I've seen. And what it shows is this. What, it did, what they did was, what's your expectation, they asked people, about aging? Do you think you'll be able to manage? Do you think you'll be able to cope? Do you look forward to 10 years' time? And they divided them into two groups, the people who dreaded aging and the people who said, yes, I can cope and I can manage. What they found was a self-fulfilling prophecy, that the people who thought they could manage did well and coped well and experienced a continued strengthening of their cognitive processes. That's a hugely important one, even when other factors were controlled. So in other words, the belief that you can manage aging, your attitude towards it, the very same thing applies to retirement, that it's not the age exactly you retire at, but rather how you manage that. Um, so there's a lot of other factors, I just mentioned them finally there, uh, in that stress and anxiety is important. Um, depression has an impact as well, negative impact. Loneliness has. Um, but on the other hand, there are many other positive emotions, like social involvement is, it makes a difference, and emotional makeup, in, in, including feeling grateful, that makes a great deal uh, of uh, difference. So the news from the aging literature is certainly, in my experience, the most positive that I've seen in any area. And the other thing that's interesting about it is how little is known about it. Because if you ask people, certainly in the media, um, in, 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 about uh, aging, they would identify it as our number one problem. It's not. It's our number one opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you.